Hello friends, this is Pastor Michael getting ready for our midweek Bible study and I want you to turn to the book of Luke, the first chapter, as we will have a Christmas and Advent theme. And I want to give special thanks to my friend and a former uh, classmate, a fellow student, Mike Miller, Pastor Mike Miller. And uh, Mike and I were in the Clark College Singers and in the Clark College Choir and we took many classes together. I think uh, all of our New Testament Greek classes and Mike uh, did very well with the Greek and he, he understood it very well, did a great job with it and he's a serious student of God's Word and we've been Facebook friends now for some time, maybe 10 years or more we got reconnected there and Mike's been a great blessing to me, he's encouraged me uh, especially after Jennifer's stroke, he uh, lost his wife uh, a little while back due to some diabetes complications but he was a uh, very encouraging to me and he gave a lot of great info uh, after uh, Jennifer's stroke and I appreciate him and he shared uh, on Facebook uh, his sermons that he was going to preach through Christmas and I said that sounds great he says I'll send you the outlines so uh, he sent them to me the other day and I have uh, thanked him for them this morning and asked for permission to use them uh, during our Wednesday studies and he told me I was free to use anything uh, so I want to give him credit he's what wrote this outline but I want to help you here to understand the birth of Christ as Mary saw it. And then we'll look next week at the, of the birth of Christ as Joseph saw it. And then, um, uh, but again, turn to the book of Luke. That's the third book in the New Testament. Uh, chapter 1, we're going to look at verses 28 through 26 through 38. And before we do that, I just pray that the Lord will bless the reading of His Word, that He will meet every need to all those who are... Uh, watching and listening right now, that he'll bring encouragement, that he will do in the hearts and lives of those who, who listen and watch uh, what needs to be done so that he will be glorified, their need will be met, and uh, Christ uh, again will be glorified and that uh, we know that as he is glorified, our, our needs are met and we, uh, we have the answer to our prayers, the deep needs of our heart. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So in verse 26 of Luke 1, we read, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. He came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. So we see a couple of points here, and the first thing it kicks off with is the announcement. Uh, the angel Gabriel was sent by God. That's the first thing. There was a messenger. The angel Gabriel sent by God. And uh, he was sent to Galilee, um, which was the city in the region of Nazareth. He was sent by God and he makes an announcement. And, uh, and that is that she, it says in verse 28, is chosen by God. It says, you know, hail in the King James, thou that are highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women. And so you're blessed. You've been chosen. Hey, the, the Lord has chosen you. The Lord is with thee. You are highly favored by God. And uh, this, this is what, what, what had happened to her. It was a, she was a person sent by God in verse 26, chosen by God. And it says this person chosen by God, this Mary was a virgin. And in the word virgin, and excuse me as I lean forward, because uh, Mike has uh, made things big print for me, which is great, but I'm having to reach up and scroll to see my notes here. Uh, but it said to a virgin. Um, the literal Greek translation of virgin is a word called pathanos, 
which means undefiled, unmarried girl. Now, Roman Catholics will say that Mary was always a virgin and that Joseph had kids by another wife and she had passed away and that Mary and Joseph, uh, you know, they lived together but they never had sexual relations and uh, I don't see a problem with the holiness of Mary by her marrying Joseph and later having sexual relations and having children. I think that's a very holy thing to do. I don't think that would contaminate her. I don't believe she was sinless as they do. I, I, don't, I don't get that. I don't understand. I understand some elements of Mary, uh, the mother of God. I, I get some of that. I've studied some Catholic theology and uh, just as the queen mother in the Old Testament, Queen Mother was a powerful position. She was more powerful than the king's wife. Queen Mother, son, the king. That was a, a big deal. But the Queen Mother was a, a big position. They sort of see it that way, that Mary would be like the Queen Mother, uh, Queen of Heaven. Again, I don't agree with that. I'm just saying I understand where they're coming from. Uh, but I, I, you know, and that, so that's, Mary was undefiled, but not undefiled in the sense of perfectly sinless. Okay, she was a sinner saved by grace, but um, she was human. She was a godly lady, very godly. Okay, she was uh, but undefiled, and she was also unmarried, and uh, she was betrothed to Joseph. We'll see that later, and that was like being married, but they had not come together sexually yet, or they certainly weren't supposed to. Now, some couples did, okay? You need to know that there were some people that always thought, Joseph and Mary had been sexually unchaste. In their day and time, God didn't clear that up. Now we know that from the scriptures and even from the tradition, the church has just, just any writings that were going on, we, we know that from, from that time, but certainly from the scripture, which is authoritative for our life and accurate and uh, without error. Uh, we know that. But uh, Jesus' day and time, they didn't clear that up. Take comfort that God doesn't always clear up everything about your story. Some people are going to think what they're going to think about you. Okay? And God may not clear it up beside heaven. It causes you to trust in the Lord and in His plan. that He knows what's best. But she was a virgin, a holy person. Again, I don't believe she was sinless. Uh, and I have uh, honestly tried to understand where other people are coming from. I, I don't around blasting things if I haven't studied it. I would advise you not to do so. Uh, if you're talking to someone Catholic and you, you haven't read as I have, just say, hey, we understand Mary's a very godly lady and uh, we, we have great respect for her. Uh, and she is, she was a human mother of our Lord, but uh, she wasn't the spiritual mother of our Lord. Uh, she's, um, she was a human. Uh, and all Catholics don't believe the same thing about that. So. Uh, there's varying de uh, degrees of that, but uh, what they believe about her. But most do believe that she has a special place. Um, the idea of praying to her is that, hey, when you pray to her, she doesn't have the power to help you, but she'll go to Jesus and he'll help you out. Um, look, Jesus loves us. He, he doesn't love us more because his mama comes and asks us to do something. You can go directly to Jesus, and you should because you have access. But... And I didn't get off into that, again, to blast other people. I'm just trying to straighten some things out. And, and at the same time, trying to tell you I understand why some people believe what they do. Um, give you some insight that maybe you can explain this to other people. And without being ugly or out being, you know, a jerk. But Mary was a virgin. She was sexually chaste. And the angel comes and says, Blessed are, art thou, or blessed are you among women. You are blessed. You are a highly favored one. Is uh, the Lord is with you. Okay? And so the Lord was with me. I mean, there was some heavy stuff being laid on her here, but God was with her, and the Lord wanted her to know that He was there. And she gets this news that she's going to bear a son. And she, she, she was going to conceive in her womb, as it says, um, and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He'll be great and be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he'll reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. She was going to bear a son. But you know, 
between that time of hearing this news about bearing a son and being called the favored one, she was greatly troubled because she's wondering, what's up with this? What kind of greeting is this that I'm highly favored? I mean, I know I'm just a lowly, you know, poor girl. I'm from the line of David, but I'm poor. Uh, I'm, nothing, I'm nothing special. Nobody think, thought of her as anything special. But she's been told, don't be afraid. <laughs> um, Angel knew what was going on here in her heart and said, you found favor with God. You could see her troubled face there. And so God was going to give her, her a son, and he was going to have this eternal kingdom. He was going to reign and rule. So this is what happened to Mary. This is the thing that happened. But here's her reaction, and I already touched on this. Verse 29 says she was troubled. She was wondering well, what, what manner of greeting or what manner of salutation is this. Uh, and it said she was frightened, you know, and so that's why he's saying do not be afraid because she was afraid. And let me just tell you something, when God deals with you or if you were to have this kind of manifestation, there's, I keep telling our church that you know, God loves us, Central Baptist Church. He, he loves His people. But there's to be a reverence about the things of God. There's to be some awe and maybe what I'd call holy fear. Wow, I'm in the presence of someone awesome. And I felt the presence of God in a great way in our worship service last Sunday morning through songs that were sung, testimonies, that were testified, the word that was read, uh, message that was preached. Uh, I just believe an uh, invitation song. I mean, you guys sang with all your heart that I, I can't even walk, Lord, without you holding my hand. I can't make it. You, you, you prayed a prayer that said, Jesus, we are dependent on you. And that honors the Lord so much for his people to admit that. But, you know, Mary, she was frightened. And so she asked a question, how can this be? I mean, you know, she said, how could this be? I, since I'm a virgin, you know, I've not known a man in a sexual way. And so Gabriel says, the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. In verse 35, he explains this. The Holy Spirit's going to come upon you, and you're going to have, like I said, this child that's going to be born. And I've seen some of the folks on Twitter that want to overreact at times saying, Holy Spirit raped her. I'm like, no, no, no. That is not, I mean, I know some people have been so traumatized by what has happened to them. And I, my heart goes out to them. And I'm doing all I can to fight sexual abuse in the church, to call it out, to proclaim it's wrong, to say that people don't have a right to come into a church and under the guise of, of Christian love and brotherhood and sisterhood, touch and rub and feel on people. There's folks that want to do that. You know, they want to say, I'm just giving you Christian love. No, you're being creepy and you, you, you're rubbing and you're fondling, folks. And we're not going to put up with that in our church. I'll tell you that. I mean, if you think about coming, that, that we're not a safe place for you. We're safe for those who want to come worship, okay? So if you've got a habit of rubbing all over people, we ain't the place for you, okay? We will call you out. Tell you to stop doing that, okay? And if you don't like it, you can go. Uh, I don't really care if we hurt your feelings, okay? Uh, and we ain't trying to hurt your feelings. If it was, you were just honestly, I know some people are touchy and they don't mean anything by it. And we're not talking about that. We understand that. But we're just saying that there's a lot of predator kind of people want to, I don't know, they take advantage of the niceness of Christian people. We ought to be loving and nice, but we got boundaries up. And we're going to keep people safe. And that's okay. But the Holy Spirit didn't rape Mary, okay? Because we'll see later at the end of this that, I mean, she submits to this news that she, she doesn't resist it. So uh, if you're not resisting something, and that's our third point here, submission and acceptance. She's given this sign, and the sign was that, hey, this has happened, to, not exactly like this, but there's somebody else that's had a miraculous birth, or is going to have a miraculous birth. Your cousin Elizabeth, who in her old age has conceived a son. And she and Zacharias came together for that, but they were old, old past the age of childbearing, and God gave her a son, John the Baptist. And that's Jesus' cousin. And so sometimes, you know, this is why we go through what we go through to help somebody else. I mean, Mary was a, I mean, Elizabeth was a comfort to Elizabeth. Mary even packs up and goes to see Elizabeth. And uh, God, God gives her some encouragement. He says, with God, nothing shall be impossible. And so Mary submits to the Lord. She says, behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, or 
is it says uh, in ESV, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. But I sort of like, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. And uh, be it unto me according to thy word. And then the angel departed from her. Mary submitted to this. So it wasn't, it wasn't rape. Okay. Mary submitted to what was happening here. And the Holy Spirit came upon her. And out of her came the Lord Jesus, the perfect God man, 100% God, 100% divine, and 100% human. And Mary was one of the agents that God used. God may use you. And we'll, and I don't even like to, God worked, let me just say, God worked through her. God doesn't, her use is, is sort of a negative connotation like, Hey, you used me. And that, 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 I know I don't like it when people use me. But God worked through her. I think it's a better way to say that. I try to make sure that I don't use that. God used me, but Lord, flow through me, work through me, touch the world through me. I think that has a better ring to it. So Mary accepted this and she said, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm yours. According to what you've said, let it happen. I surrender. Oh, Mary's response was one of surrendering. Folks, as long as we're fighting the Lord, we're never going to be happy. But if we surrender, oh, the Lord do so many wonderful things through us. So in this Advent and Christmas season, keep that in mind. I mean, I don't cringe every time I hear a secular Christmas song come on, but I don't listen to a lot of that. I listen to songs that, uh, you know, again, some of my Christmas stuff is a little different than some... People, uh, I do like some of the old classic pop standards, and I listen to those. But I like a lot of sacred music. I listen to a lot of sacred Christmas carols, choirs, and uh, my friend Bill Maloney, an independent musician who's recorded a ton of albums and uh, about eighty some odd now. Bill has um, done some great, great work there, and he's he thinks about what he's writing about and thinks about. God, but also the human experience and how God has come into the world to touch the humans. Uh, he has a song I really love, Every Father Knows and Cares. And it's a, it's a Christmas song. And it speaks of the love our Heavenly Father has for us. So folks, that's, that's what I want you to focus on. This Advent and Christmas season, focus on the Lord Jesus. Focus on what He came to do. And you'll find joy in your heart, even in the midst of seasons of difficulty. May the Lord bless you and keep you coming. Join us for morning worship, for actually for the Sunday school hour, which is a Bible study hour at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings and uh, 11 for morning worship. And we would just love to see you, love to have you there. Uh, so may the Lord bless you and keep you and make His face shine upon you. God bless.